I could get into a highly subjective review on transparency, imaging, separation, but I'm not going to. Daima A07, the simple, budget-friendly amp that you could literally suggest to anyone if a person either wanted a simple desktop setup or just wanted to try out one of these little Class D amps. I have tried a lot of these amps, some good, some bad, some really bad, but the A07 series never let me down. Now today we have the new big brother, the A07 Pro. Is the A07 Pro gonna live up to the hype or will these new features just bring more compromises? First, let's take a peek at the A07 Pro and see what's new here. For one thing, it's bigger, and that's pretty obvious why. We went from a simple on-off switch and a volume knob to an on-off toggle, an input selector, RCA and Bluetooth, and for some, a big one, tone controls. And of course, the volume knob. Breaking this down, yes, we do now have Bluetooth. It's a Bluetooth 5.2 iteration provided by a Qualcomm QCC 304X, and the supported codecs are below. While I generally avoid Bluetooth when possible, it's still a welcomed addition. The original A07 required additional hardware. This one has you up and running in a single unit. Myself, I would probably pick up a simple Weem device, the Mini or Pro, and bring that into the system via an RCA cable to get the best performance. It's kind of funny to think about how much this segment has grown, budget hi-fi. I still personally enjoy the high-end pieces. The designs and craftsmanship is almost like art in some cases. But there is something to be said about this 200 and under market that keeps producing some really fun stuff. If these companies keep producing and advancing these products at the rate they currently are, we're gonna see a plethora of impressive products in the near future. Five years from now, I hope that I'm reviewing the AIMA A100 Pro Max Mark III or something like that. Now about those tone controls. Some yeah, some nah. A lot of people would rather leave these out of the signal path, but I still welcome it. Speaker to amp pairing is not as simple and cut and dry as taking any speaker and expecting the best result. Sometimes, depending on your room or hardware pairing, you either might wanna dial back or give an extra kick in the pants in a particular dull combo. I would've liked a center detent on the controls. It's one of those where it just flows through the center point, so you just have to line it up the best that you can. What would be even better here is if there was a way to include a center detent that also took the tone control out of the signal path altogether for that particular user who doesn't want anyone messing with that neutrality. Looking at the back, we have RCA ins, a line out, speaker level connections, and the power input. What stands out the most isn't what's on the rear, it's what plugs into it. Included with the original A07 was a 32 volt five amp power supply, and the new A07 Pro has a 36 volt six amp. That's a nice step up, and if you've watched any of the dyno tests on these amps, they perform really well with a little more juice. You can actually go up to a 48 volt, but I honestly haven't found the need to yet. Well, outside of some curiosity. Yeah, I still might do that. Let's see what we have inside this one. So here's a quick little demo on how you can take these apart. These knobs will pull off with just a little bit of force. Then you can take your 10 millimeter and remove the nuts holding the board to the front face plate. There's a total of eight fasteners to remove if you want to completely disassemble this. You could leave the front two bottoms if you plan to leave the faceplate on. You can then pull the front faceplate off or leave it as is because the board will be able to be pulled out from the back freely. A note for reassembly, make sure to align your tone controls so that they are true with neutral. It's a good thing to check this anyways to make sure that they were aligned from the factory. The item that will be important for some of my viewers is the swappable op amps. This one actually has five. The front right one is for input buffering and amplification. The front left one is for bass and treble tone controls. The middle left one is for the single-ended to differential conversion of the left channel. The middle right one is for single-ended to differential conversion of the right channel. And the rear one is for the auxiliary output buffering. What's inside is the TPA3255 amp chip, which is popular in many of these desktop sized amps. It's also a personal favorite of mine as far as performance. While many of these amps have the same 3255, do not expect them to sound the same. The power output is gonna be very similar. Just take a look at the included power supply to gauge what that's gonna be. But the actual sound character, some of these have a little more punch in the low end, others a little emphasize mids. I could get into a highly subjective review on transparency, imaging, separation, but 
I'm not going to. I don't really think that's the type of review these amps need. I think we should appreciate the direction these amps are going. The quality is improving. The features are growing. Even the components they're using are starting to get more premium. So a better description of the sound might be, does this amp sound good? Yes, it actually does for the price. Will it surprise people if you tell them it's less than $100? Yeah, it certainly will. These amps are for people new to audio, as well as established listeners who want to add a simple yet effective setup. Would many people fail a blind test on this amp versus something in the two to $500 range? I won't say that you'll certainly fail this one, but I wouldn't doubt many would. There are certain nuances that might give some things away, but it certainly won't be cut and dry until you get into models a little higher up the chain. So what would I do different on this one? Well, for one, I would definitely add detents to the tone controls, or even better yet, a bypass switch so you could keep your settings and use tone controls as you desired. Uh, how about shake it up a little bit? Let's add some color, uh, white chassis, silver chassis, something like that. And since this one in some ways is an all-in-one unit now, let's throw a remote in there. Why not? So what did they get just right? Uh, that's pretty easy for me. The budget to performance ratio is spot on. Spending so little never sounded so good. It's mod friendly, op amp swappable for those who just have to tinker with everything. They added a larger power supply over the original A07. It's rare I'm gonna complain about more power. And finally, they added more features. If you're gonna label something a pro, there better be some advancements and they did just that. They added tone controls, Bluetooth, and more power coming from that upgraded power supply. And to be honest, I'm not sure how they did it because the price isn't much higher than the standard A07. Overall, the A07 Pro delivers a very entertaining and pleasing sound that will entertain music lovers of really all experience levels. Get one if you need an extra system, be it in the garage, gym, or bedroom. Get one if you're new to hi-fi and wanna dip your feet in the water before splurging on something much more expensive. Don't be that guy who knocks on these before even giving it a try. I like my fair share of class AB amps too, but we really don't need to fixate on that to the point of leaving a lot of fun pieces of gear off the table. At the end of the day, these offer more opportunities for people to start out in their own audiophile journey, so let's embrace it. I'm not saying give them a free pass though, just because it's budget gear. These companies are often on the forums looking for feedback. Offer up your ideas, hold them to a high standard just like any other company. If the last couple years shows anything, they wanna to continue to grow in this segment. Well. That's enough for today, everyone. Take care and I'll talk to you later. See ya.